to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 21. Okay, okay uh, I'll start reading. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunken with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Let's pray briefly. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. As we are here gathered to worship, I pray that you would uh, help us to listen to your word. And God, help us to live that out in our workplace, in our school, wherever we go starting tomorrow. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, do you guys ever wonder how we are supposed to live out our Christian identity in this world? Do you guys ever question yourself, okay, God has called me to be his child, but now what am I supposed to do about it as I'm living in my workplace and in the world? Uh, last time I was here, I shared from Ephesians chapter 1 uh, what it means to be God's child. I shared that through God's amazing grace, God has uh, chosen us, adopted us, redeemed and sealed us so that we may have a new identity in God. And that is if we've decided to follow Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then we are no longer living for myself or living for the world, but we are God's children that are living for God's glory in the world that we are here today. The song that we just sang, I am yours, I'm yours forever, that is our identity, that we are not somebody else, but I am God's child, I am forever God. That is our new identity. So if we have that new identity, how are we supposed to live that identity in the world? Uh, in my current church, we've been examining the book of Ephesians uh, for the last several months. We've discovered, especially from chapters 1 through 4, we've discovered discover what it means to have our identity restored, renewed in Christ Jesus. Because if we live in a world that says for you to find your identity, meaning your sense of worth, you have to be this or that. You have to be rich. You have to be successful. You have to have a decent job. You have to go to a decent school. And that is your sense of worth, your identity. But Book of Ephesians from chapters 1 through 4 tells us that our identity, our true sense of worth is found in Christ, in Christ alone. It's Christ that fills us. It's Christ that gives us hope. It's Christ that makes us satisfied. It's Christ that gives us new identity and the sense of worth. So if we have this new identity, how are we supposed to live that identity in this world? Uh, today in our text in verse 15, uh, Paul says, Look carefully how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Here the word look, uh, in Greek, it's written in a strong, commanding way. It says, blepete. In other words, Paul is saying with a strong command. It's kind of like an army officer saying to the below rank, look, do this or do that. So Paul is saying with a strong command, look. And then he says very carefully. In other words, Paul, Apostle Paul in today's text is urging us uh, in a very strong way to look examine the way we walk. Walking in the New Testament means how we live our lives. Walk, walking means the way we walk our lives, the way, the manner by which we live out in our world today. And then Paul says, we have, so Paul says, look carefully whether we are living our lives wisely or not wisely. Um, here, living wisely has nothing to do with gaining education, status, or money. But rather, in Apostle Paul's minds, living our lives wisely means that we live our lives in a way that reflects our new identity that we've just sang, I'm forever God. Reflecting that identity in the world, that is walking wisely in Paul's mind. So the way we work, the way we talk, and the way we manage our schedule, the way we behave, everything we do in our life, not just on Sundays, but Monday through Saturday, everything we do in our lives, does that reflect that we are God's child, that we have that new identity. So today, Paul urges us to examine, look very carefully, whether our lives are reflecting the new 
identity that's found in Christ Jesus. So the question is, how should we live that? How should we live our lives reflecting that new identity in Christ Jesus? And before we go to that, we have to ask question: Why? Why should we live out our identity in the world? Verse sixteen, Paul says, "The days are evil." In other words, the world we live in today is full of evil. Here, I believe that Paul is evil by evil referring to the influences of the world because I believe the material world in itself is good, but sometimes it can actually pull away us from having relationship with God. What are idols in our lives that make us treasure um, the things of this world more than God? I mean, like even our smartphones, I believe it's a good in a way that it uh, provides us with the ability to connect with our friends. But sometimes our smartphones can pull away us or distract us from having that quiet time, a relationship with God. So by evil, Paul is saying whatever it is in the world, whether it's good or bad, whatever it's in the world that pulls us away from having that intimate relationship with God. And because the world is full of those things that pull away us from relationship with God, we ought to extremely be careful and examine and look the lives and the way we live to see whether we're living that lives reflecting Christ's identity in this world. So now the question, how can we live wisely? How can we live wisely that's our lives that's reflecting our new identity uh, in Christ in this world? Paul gives uh, three ways that we can do that. The first is use our time wisely. Um, I, I believe in verse 15, Paul says, making the best use of the time. So we have to use our time wisely to uh, live our lives wisely, reflecting new identity in this world. And as I was meditating on this text, I asked myself, why does Paul say time? Why doesn't Paul say use your money wisely or use your status wisely, use your influence wisely? But he says use your time wisely. And I, as I was pondering about this, I think Paul is using the time because time, in fact, includes everything. We often say, uh, with more time, I can improve my health by eating well, by running. I can make more money by uh, investing my time in education or training. But time, time, we can never buy time. In other words, the time is broader in the sense that it's within a time that we make money. It's within a time we get make our health better. It's within a time we uh, breathe and do activities. So time is including everything. So by using the word time, I think Paul is saying that um, is saying that use everything that you have. Use every part of your life, not just on Sunday worship, but through Monday through Saturday. Use everything you have in your position to uh, use that wisely so that you may reflect your identity, uh, new identity in this world. Um, recently, I've been reading a book uh, that's called The Juggling Act uh, Pat by Pat Gelsinger. He's a, he used to be a vice president at the Intel Corporation. Um, at age of 30, Pat uh, had a great dilemma. He had a life crisis because, look, he was a vice president of like one of the largest corporations in the world. He had a master's degree. He had an amazing family. And he, he had a, so much wealth that he could provide the next two generations, grandsons and daughters of inheritance. So at the age of 30, Pat is questioning himself, life crisis, what else do I want to accomplish in this life? I felt, he says, I felt as if the rudder had been taken off my ship. And now I was wondering somewhat aimlessly, uncertain exactly where I wanted to go for the rest of life. So in this life crisis, Pat examines his, uh, his 30 years of life and he questions whether he was moving into the right direction. And then during his vacation time, he comes up with a mission statement in his life that this is what I'm going to uh, do for the rest of my life. And he says that uh, that mission statement, statement was to use everything God has given him to bring God's kingdom in the world. So for the rest of his life, he uh, lives this value, this mission statement that the way he governs his corporation, the way he treats his clients, he makes sure that he's living out the mission, that somehow through his influence, people are coming to know Christ. Uh, in the book that's called Simple, uh, Pastor Behaibo, uh, challenges the readers in this way. Examine your calendars. Is your calendar just filled randomly with this or that? Or is your calendar moving you to the right direction? 
to be used by God to advance God's kingdom in this world. Um, in my current church plant, I have a ministry partner, and we meet every Wednesday morning for a coffee. And what we do in that a time is we examine everything we do. We examine our uh, every schedule that we go through, and we question ourselves: Are we using our time wisely? Uh, do our activities uh, reflect our values of being missional and relational and being uh, spreading the gospel in this city? So to live our lives, Paul, the first question Paul asks us is use your time wisely. So let us examine our time. You are examining your weekly schedule, your monthly schedule. Are they just filled with the random things? Or are they filled with the things that move you to the right direction? Move you to do things for God. So the first thing that to reflect our new identity in this world, we have to use our time wisely. And secondly, we have to know God's will. Verse 17, Paul says, Do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Um, in our evil days, it's very hard to know what God's will is. If we look in our world today, it's, I think it's, it has gone a little crazy. The world says, uh, love yourself, live for yourself, make lots of money so that you could enjoy the rest of your life um, being happy. But if we are not careful, I believe we can be drifted away by those values. The world says live for yourself, love yourself, but God says love Christ and love people. The world says make your money so that you could enjoy your life. But John Wesley, he says, make all you can, save all you can, and give all you can for God's kingdom and his glory. And as I'm preparing for marriage uh, in next January, I realize, um, thank you very much, um, I'm thinking more and more about finance. How am I going to make through the next 10 years, 20 years? And I realize if I'm not careful, Although money is a very good thing in itself, it can also be an idol that controls me. So in this confusing world for us not to be led by the values of this world, we have to know what the will of the Lord is. We have to know what God's will is in our lives. But I believe that knowing God's will is not just about memorizing a bunch of rules, do this or do that. And knowing God's will is not just an information either because I may know you, your name, but that doesn't mean I really know you in an intimate, personal way. So knowing God's will is more than just memorizing. It's more than knowing who God is. It's more than information. Knowing God's will actually means that we are so much immersed in having intimate relationship with God that we totally lose ourselves in God. That means we're conforming to the image of Christ Jesus, that our characters are being shaped and transformed by God's characters and by God's holiness. In our uh, age, whether we live in a time, it's so hard us to tell what's right and wrong. It says if you feel like then that is your truth. It's so hard to tell what's right and wrong. And in this age, we must be deeply immersed in relationship with God so that we are not conforming to the, uh, the worldly values, but we're actually conforming to Christ's values and our characters are being shaped by God's characters. Um, I read another book by Dennis Bucky. He's a CEO of an energy company called AES. Uh, it's a one of the largest corporations in the world that provides electricity. And as CEO, Dennis, he was also a co-founder. Uh, he was responsible for about 40,000 employees. And in that book, Dennis shows how he strives to make the workplace a joyful place for his uh, 40,000 employees. And his shareholders often criticize him for being too nice. His shareholders uh, would criticize him Dennis, you don't understand the nature of business. Work is just work. Work cannot be fun. Life is life. Don't confuse business with their life. Do not try to bring your Christian values to our corporations. But Dennis knew that as a CEO who is a child of God, whose identity is found in Christ, he knew that he could not manage his business with the worldly values, meaning creating more profits for shareholders. He knew that as a CEO who is a Christian, he had to govern the corporation with the godly values. 
So he spent enough time knowing God and his will for his corporations. How does God want us to treat his、uh, clients? How does God want us to treat his employees? And with that, he、uh, came up with three values. I forgot what they were integrity, fairness, and one more. And he made sure that his corporation is running with those godly values. And then, His goal was to,、uh, through that,、um, that people will experience God's love. But、uh, in the last chapter of the book, he talks about his failures.、Uh, for 10 years, because of those values, the corporation has been working very well. But in, during the financial crisis, when the stock market was just crumbling,、um, Dennis was a guy who took all the blame. Because shareholders, when everything was going well, they praised Dennis, but when everything was going bad, they were criticizing Dennis. That's at least what I felt like when I was reading that book. So, in the last chapter, Dennis talks about、uh, you know, the,、uh, running corporations with godly values. It's not about、uh, making your stock market go rise or bad. I'm running these values in this corporation because they are right values, because they are God's values, not because they make wealth. What I really like this about the book is that here was a man, whether he was being successful or not, was trying, striving his best to do what is right,、uh, his best not to be drifted by the worldly values, but he was striving and doing his best to follow God's will and do. That God's will in His world. So let us question ourselves Do we actually spend time with God to know God's will? What is God's will for your, for your career?、Um, I've been an accountant for one year and I've been questioning that. What is God's will as an accountant? How am I going to treat my clients? How am I going to treat my customers, my employees? And that's been、uh, something that's been on my mind, questioning myself. If you are a doctor, nurse, teacher, whatever you are, ask yourself what is God's will for your career? If you're a student, ask God what's God's will for being a student? We have to know God's will so that we are not being drifted away by the worldly values. So,、uh, to live our life that's wisely reflecting new identity in the world,、um, the first, make your time wisely, know God's will, and lastly, be filled with the Spirit.、Um, verse 18 says, Do not get drunken with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit.、Um, here, although Paul is talking about wine, alcohol, but I believe that Paul, in Paul's mind, it's more than wine. Because what happens when we drink too much alcohol is that we lose our self control. So, in other words, Paul is saying, Apostle Paul is saying, that we should not let the things of this world consume us or control us, that we lose our identity as the child of God. So, let's question ourselves what are the things? In your life, that m a k e us lose our identity.、Um, I believe careers can be a, our jobs can be a really uh, uh, blessings from God. And the Bible says we must work faithfully, we must work integrity, with loving heart. But the Bible also commands us that we take time of Sabbath, rest from the work. And why did God give a Sabbath the time of rest? I think it's because if we're not careful, the work can be our identity. Because we live in a world that says、um, the first thing that we meet people, the first thing we ask is, What's your name? The second thing is, So, what do you do? Oh, I'm this or that. And that is our identity. So, the time of rest, Sabbath, is a time that we take off from our work so that we、uh, remind ourselves our identity is the child of God and we are here to worship God. So, what are the things in your life that make s you lose your identity? It could be sins.、Um, it could be sin of pride, sin of lust. For me, it's a sin of self consciousness. Because when I am self conscious, I forget who I am, that I'm the child of God, and I act in a way that's fearful rather than with faith. So, an apostle Paul is saying, find things in your life that make s you lose your identity, whatever that is. And it says, be filled with the Spirit.、Um, here, the command, being filled with the Spirit, is actually written in a present tense. In other words, 
it needs to be an ongoing exercise. Just as we never stop breathing, we are keep breathing, even in our times of sleep, God is saying, be filled with the Spirit. In other words, it needs to be an ongoing action in our life. So every time I'm filled with sins of pride, sins of self-consciousness, I need to let that go and let God in to my life. Um, in my current church, we've been reading uh, through the Bible, the New Testament. Um, I live a very busy and hectic life, and sometimes, uh, to be honest with you, the only time that I read the scriptures when I'm preparing for a sermon, I've been living my life so busy that I just didn't have any time to meditate, to read, to let the scripture come into my life. But we've been uh, having in our church this Tuesday night scripture time that we just pause everything that we do. And when we come, we do nothing but just reading the scripture together. No music, just reading the scripture together. And that's been so helpful to me. That as I've been reading the scripture, God's been reminding me again and again who I am, that I'm God's child. And I've been letting God come into my life that he may redirect my steps, where, where I should go and what I should not do. So being filled with the spirit that needs to be an ongoing action, present tense. So the question that we have to ask ourselves, are we being filled with the Spirit? Are we letting God take control of our lives? Are we spending time in His or praise and prayer? So in conclusion, how do we live our lives that's reflecting new identity in this world? Spend time wisely, know God's will, and be filled with the Spirit. And what's amazing is that as we're engaging in this process of uh, using time and knowing God's will and being filled with the Spirit, God says that there's going to be an amazing thing that's happening, not just in the world, but in actually in our community. Because uh, in verse 19, uh, Paul says, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody to the Lord with your heart. As we're uh, living that life of reflecting new identity in Christ, in fact, what's going to happen in our church within this Oikos community is that it's going to be a community of praise. Um, and, then, uh, and then it's also going to be a community of thankfulness. In verse 20, it says, giving thanks always and for everything to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we're living, again, that identity in the world, we're going to be a community of thankfulness. And as I've been preparing this sermon, what's so amazing about our Christianity is that, in fact, Christianity is the only religion that gives God thankfulness because we have God who rules, who controls everything. And that's the reason in good times and bad times we can respond with thankfulness to God. And so not only are we going to be a community of praise, community of thankfulness, but we are also going to be a community of harmony. And verse 21 says, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Again, as we're living that identity in our world, what's going to happen within our community is that we are going to be a community of harmony, not conflict, not jealous for one another, but of harmony. So let, let us look. Paul says, look very carefully, examine carefully whether your life is reflecting that new identity, that you are God's child. Will your friends, will the people around you say, yeah, you are really belonging to God. Somehow I, I see something different about you. Examine the way you spend time. Open up, uh, let's open up our calendars and see if there's anything that's not in line with God's values. And are we spending time with God that we are letting God take control of ourselves? We're letting God transform our characters that we're not drifted away by the worldly values? And are we letting the Spirit take control of our lives? Are we letting go of ourselves? Whatever that is, sins of pride, love, self-consciousness, you name it. Are we letting go of ourselves so that we may be filled with the Spirit? And as we are working on these things, I pray that the Oikos will be a community of praise, thankfulness, and harmony. Let's pray together. Father, we are grateful today. You've given us this time to worship you. God, we live in a busy world, uh, distracting world. 
uh, that says uh, for you to find yourself or if you need this or that. And we live in a, our uh, marketplace where we are uh, evaluated by our job performance. And if we don't meet that performance, God, we are, uh, our self-worth just crumbles. God, but just remind us every time that we are chosen and we are adopted and we are redeemed and sealed by the blood of Christ. That our, our identity is not determined by what we do, but what Christ has done on that cross. And if anyone in this room who have not found that identity, God, I pray uh, by your spirit that you would help that uh, person to look to you. And God, um, as we're trying to live this identity in the world, God, we face so many challenges. Uh, we face so many hurdles. But God, may your spirit empower us and that God help us to use our time wisely, uh, knowing that that time will never come back. At the moment, right, that's passing by God, this moment will never come back. So help us to use time wisely and help us to spend time with you in scripture and, and prayer and praise that uh, we may know your will. Um, we may know your will for our lives in general, but we may know your will for our careers. We may know your will for our family. In every aspect of our life, we may know what your will is. And God, help us be filled with the Spirit. Help us to let go. Every time, just as we're breathing, God, remind us, just as we're breathing, that we need to be filled with the Spirit every day, every moment. God, we may grow to the, be the community of praise uh, that's praising you in difficult times and good times because you are God who reign over us. Community of thankfulness, giving thanks to you in all circumstances, and community of harmony, loving one another, serving one another. And um, praying for one another. We thank you for this time. We lift the name of Christ Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name.